right, welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Make sure you subscribe, give us a like, ring the bell, check us out on social media, and uh, of course, you know, follow us on Patreon, help us out on PayPal and all that. Thank you so much. Today on the podcast, I am honored to have Swami Gnanda Mundra Ananda. Did I do it right? Very much. You're there, brother. Thank ah, you so much. I tried. Namaste, man. Namaste. Namaste, <laughs> my friend. Thank you so much for being here with me, it's man. I really appreciate you taking the time to come over. Yes. Uh, how are you doing, man? I'm doing great. Absolutely yeah. fantastic, yeah. That's fantastic, man. So uh, for people who don't know and are unfamiliar with the, uh, the concept of the Swami... Yes. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, maybe how you become a Swami, what a Swami is sure. into, what he does on his, uh, during like a, mm. a cer- ceremony or a, a practice, as you were. In. Sure, absolutely. Well, Swami comes from uh, Eastern religion side of things. Although what uh, I was ordained into is uh, the uh, spiritual science of Kriya Yoga. So it's a spiritual science. It's not a theology. We don't follow a sky God. Um, To really narrow it down and make it basic, it's just to be one with yourself, um, observe yourself, observe the mind, and help you to navigate uh, the life in a more harmonious way. So Swami in Sanskrit is really just a representation of priest. Uh, like in Western theologies, you would say, you know, Father John or Father whatever, I guess it would be, you would be calling me Swami, which would be Father Swami Ganamudra Ananda. Right. And the name comes uh, from, uh, they break it down. You're given this at, when you're ordained after seminary school. Ananda is at the end of every Swami name. Uh, it means bliss in Sanskrit. Uh, so my name was actually one of the longer names that they have done. We had a great laugh about it when they ordained me. Yeah, um, <laughs> but it was Gana Mudra Ananda, and Gana is one of the four paths of yoga. And it's wisdom, and uh, Mudra is one of uh, these. And probably can't see that on the podcast, but it is oh, just yeah, we got, oh, yeah. well, video podcast. Yes, you know, like an Om. Uh, so. That is how it was given to me. And so that it was my name. And the name for them meant for me is that I will find my bliss in this lifetime by following my path of wisdom. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. I love that. So uh, going through the uh, the seminary school, mm-hmm. uh, so you started it, you said like something like three years ago? Uh, I started in 2014. Oh, okay. So yes. a while ago then. Yes, it was. And I actually uh, finished up probably about seven months to eight months sooner than um, a lot of people do. And I think mainly because it was, uh, you know, I was a little bit older. Uh, so I really dedicated all of my time outside of work to the studies. So the studies are a lot of reading and then everything is a written essay uh, answers that they uh, read and grade. Uh, and it could be anything from two pages to 10 or 15 pages in some of these. And you're, you're, you're listening and you're reading a lot. And so they're, they're trying to observe how you're going along uh, during each uh, quarter. And so we had uh, eight quarters of uh, studies. Okay. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, after you finished up all that and you started your Swami duties, you do, you practice uh, at the Temple of Kriya Yoga. Is that what it is? That's where I was ordained through. Uh, Once you are ordained, you're basically a free agent, um, so to speak. You're welcome to just go and do whatever you like. I could open, you know, the Temple of Kriya Ganamudra Ananda if I really wanted to. But I kept close contact with the temple and I had a great relationship with some of my teachers and everything there. So they asked me uh, uh, in small increments to, would you like to do a little of this? Would you like to maybe do a Sunday service? Would you like to do this? And so it just became, uh, I started doing a lot of things for the temple and I really enjoy it as well. And uh, it's a nice element for me to be able to live my life and do the things that I still want to do, but also participate in that way and help other people too. 
That's beautiful, man. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so the practice of Kriya Yoga, yeah. uh, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, uh, people who are familiar with Autobiography of a Yogi, that's yes. the what Paramhansa Yogananda brought yes, to the United States, indeed. right? Indeed, yes, yes. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, uh, the spiritual preceptor of my temple, uh, Temple of Kriya Yoga in Chicago, was uh, Goswami Kriyananda. Uh, his guru was uh, Sri Shelley G whose guru was Paramahansa Yogananda. Oh, cool. So the spiritual preceptor of uh, my uh, uh, the temple that I was ordained through um, actually studied with Yogananda as well uh, for a time. Uh, I am not, con he's not considered my guru because I didn't study at the feet of him. So there's separations of it. Uh, I, I participate in what is called, even though I was ordained through the temple of Kriya Yoga, I'm part of the Kriya Yoga Satsanga, which means I carry the flame of Kriya for all of Kriya Yoga. Now, if you are sitting at the foot of a uh, guru, uh, which a lot of the swamis did while he was still alive at the temple of Kriya Yoga, uh, you are considered part of the lineage. So you're considered a direct disciple. So that's the little variations there. Oh, interesting, man. Yeah, but that actually, for myself, really worked out. Because for myself, I I probably am not somebody, uh, personality-wise, to go through it that way and to sit at the foot of Guru and study in that way. It was more fitting for me to do it this way and probably why I found it at the portion of my life and heard his voice and decided that is exactly where I wanted to be in to study and to be able to be a free agent and carry the Korea flame for everyone. I love it, man. And that brings up an interesting point. Uh, so when you, when you got started in this, how did, how did this actually come into your world and, and get you involved in the uh, path of Kriya Yoga and you know, Swamihood? You know, it wasn't one thing in particular. It really genuinely was uh, a lifelong probably commitment but that, that I didn't even, I was not even aware of it could have been even something that was energetically stuck in the atoms of my body from you know the beginning of time I have no idea <laughs> I don't have the data on that uh, but um, probably my observances from a child because I used to spend a lot of time in my grandmother's backyard there was a lot of trees birds wildlife and I used to be able to sit back there and squirrels would come right near me rabbits uh birds would land near me i would have you know you know bees and things around me and i just was genuinely into everything i always observed the earth i would walk in the woods i would like stare at a stream of water for you know probably an hour at a time sometimes and i didn't even realize i was probably meditating at the time and so I went through life as a teenager, you know, studying different things. I studied, started studying meditation when I was 15 under a teacher. And I did many things into my 20s and into my 30s, you know, that were always around the periphery of those types of things. You know, I still lived life. You know, I would party with the guys. I, you know, played in bands when I was in my teens and in my 20s. And used to you know play out and do all those things you know it was a, it was a blast what were you playing in the bands i was a singer oh you were the singer i was oh. a singer yeah <laughs> you got that sultry voice going yeah. on man <laughs> yeah, we did uh, hard rock yeah it was a blast it was a lot of fun i played bass too okay uh, but not in the in the band that i ended up being in uh just because they had a bass player already i enjoy the bass but they need a singer and so it goes i just okay yeah, so that's what i did um but anyway, back to, a, you know, <laughs> on topic, <laughs> uh, we, um, I was in uh, the island of Kauai in Hawaii, okay. um, fast forwarding to the, uh, I think it was around 2013, I believe, something like that. And I was hiking, I always butcher the name, the, the Nepali coast. And I was hiking and, you know, I was having meditative revelations and things like this. And like a lightning bolt, it hit me. And I was always aware of the Temple of Kriya Yoga because I had walked past it in Chicago because I lived in the area before. So I was aware of it. And I'd heard Kriyananda's voice before. And I was actually taking a course uh, that Kriyananda was doing online. 
uh, called the astral of rebirth. It was about um, how we face our own mortality and things like that. Fascinating course. But I was hiking and just like the whole part of my essence of my whole life, just bam, right then and there, it was like a supernova went off in every cell of my being. I was like, holy shit, I've always been a priest. I've always been a priest. And it just hit me just like that. And I sat there for a while and I just couldn't even believe it. And so I went down, got in my car, drove back to the Airbnb I was in. I wrote a uh, five page letter to the temple asking them for admission into their seminary program because you have to ask for admission to it. You can't just join and they choose who they, you know, choose and the rest is history as they say. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Man. So, yeah. So, uh, I mean the seminary school, mm -hmm. how long does that process could take and what does it involve? Well, the process is supposed to be three years and, uh, what it, they have eight quarters of studies and they kind of build you through the studies and it really encompasses everything, uh, yogically that you can think of. Um, everything from the Bhagavad Gita, uh, you read so many books that you have to write essays upon so they can see that you're grasping and understanding, you know, not just the reading, but what some of the authors of some of the uh, spiritual texts were trying to say. Uh, we studied all the theologies of the world, um, astrology, yoga. I mean, it was just truly a plethora of studies that it, I couldn't even imagine was there. A lot of the things I knew, so I was able to get through pretty quickly. Some of it, like we had to uh, study Sanskrit and we had to write Sanskrit and we had to understand, not fluently, but we had to at least understand the letters. We had to study the Sanskrit alphabet, things like that. That was probably the toughest part for me, but it was very re rewarding as well. And then of course we studied meditation. Uh, then we had to study all the things toward the end. A lot of the things that w we would be doing, uh, rituals, blessings, ceremonies, uh, different things like that. And included in that we had to, uh, it was mandatory to do a couple of retreats a year where we would, uh, spend, uh, five days at the retreat center. One, about one and a half days of it was done in complete silence, which was absolutely brilliant and amazing. And they wanted us during this time of silence, not just to sit in a room, but to walk the grounds, do the things we had to do, but not look somebody directly in the eye. Like when we were walking, we were supposed to walk uh, with our head down and just capturing ourselves this way because the eye contact is a form of redirecting our energies and our natural inclination is to humans is to acknowledge another person when we're looking them in the eye. It was all about going as far inward and finding as far inward as we could go during those retreats. Okay. Yeah. That's fantastic. And I, uh, yeah, I, I do, um, days of silence as well. Mm -hmm. I try to do it like once a week when I can, when Beautiful. I'm not working and, yeah. Um, we have the little chalkboard in case I need to communicate anything to Angela or something mm, like that. And nice. usually what's beautiful about and, those and days. Yeah. And Daphne, of course, she doesn't do too well with the, uh, the chalkboard, but you know, I pull a treat out. She knows exactly yeah. what to do with that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Uh, the, but the things we end up communicating on the chalkboard, uh, are just significant or just beautiful and there's not a lot said that there's not a lot that you need to say to each yeah. other in the middle of the day you yeah. know but it'd be like if a big flock of birds came and they were hanging out and now they'd just be like look at the birds yeah you know that kind of yeah. stuff would be the the most significant thing i'd have to say yeah and uh and that was real eye-opening you know yeah. where you just sit here and ramble back and forth to each other all day or you know talk about nothing and mm. it just doesn't need to be happening uh, yeah. and i really i really cherish those days yeah and i look forward to them they're wonderful and they help you return to the world in a uh, uh an even more balanced form 
then you maybe even went into that. Even though a lot of times we try to feel like we're balanced, you know, sometimes we're not. And that returning to the inwardness of ourselves helps us to kind of push that reset button, so to speak. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That inwardness of themselves or mm-hmm. yourself, right? I always yeah. try to explain that to people yeah. uh, when I'm talking to them or they're stressing out over things mm-hmm. or, you know, they're lost in their thought process mm-hmm. and they don't have this mindfulness practice. And I always yeah. tell them, you know, like people reflect on me like, why are you always so calm all the time? And I was yeah. like, I'm not here. Yeah. You're here in the world. I'm yeah. here in myself. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm doing mantra and I'm, I'm, doing mindfulness exercises mm-hmm. and clearing my thoughts and just here, like yeah. this can change as many times as it wants. Yeah. And the people I'm talking to can change and it's, it's irrelevant, you know, mm-hmm. as long as this center is at peace and yeah. you can find that within yourself, you know, and you know, it's, it's an abstract con- concept to most people. It is. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing when you start recognizing it. It is. And you can, I can, you can, we can, affect each other's energies which is i mean there's data on that i it's not just uh you know spewing something out there i mean there's real data on how we can affect our environment absolutely by the way that uh we carry ourselves yeah like i mean even simple things that they do um like random number generators right Mm -hmm. have you seen Mm -hmm. the experiments they do with that where it'll just be zeros and ones back and forth and total like almost continuity you know but mm-hmm. it's just chaos and then they're like just focus on the number one for me yeah. we just want you to create number one and yeah. slowly it's just shifts into all ones yeah. and these random number generators are yeah. occurring it's just someone sitting in the room they're not hooked up to anything yeah. it's just through the power of thought and the energy right. and the connectivity of it man mm-hmm. and it's real like real scientific experiments not anybody's feelings or opinions about things man. yeah for sure and uh, yeah it's it's yeah our energy is definitely affect the world around oh. us and the people around us. And it's, it's Absolutely. everything. It is everything. And we see it in, in harm, in harmonious way, a lot out there as well. So, Oh yeah. I, I do. Many of us try to be a beacon of, uh, you know, kind of reining that in a little bit, you know, be a voice of reason, calmness, uh, in the chaos of life. Yeah, it helps. Yeah. It helps. Yeah. yeah. You can add to the chaos or you can sure, you know, start to be this barrier against the tide, man. Yeah. And uh yeah. I uh I definitely appreciate the effect that it's had my personal practices mm-hmm. that I've been doing um which hasn't been very long honestly. I yeah. I mean, I've been doing the mindfulness and the meditation practice for 2 3 years now. Uh, and the significance that that two or three years has had uh, over my well-being and my my peace of mind and the way I treat everyone around me, sure. the way I treat myself, yeah, it's yeah. just been it's the most significant thing I've done with my life, man. Yeah. And uh, I wish I would have learned it sooner, you know. Yeah. But it all comes when it's supposed to come. Right there with your brother. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Yeah. The hardest part is wanting to share it with everybody. And you know, you can't, you can't, you know, know. it's this beautiful thing and it's free and Mm -hmm. I'll go, you know, I'd give it away to everybody I meet for sure. And, uh, yeah, nobody's, nobody's going to have it (laughs) and it comes to them when it comes to them. It seems it does. Yeah. And and that really is, you know, that's spoken absolutely, uh, correctly. It, It just is the way it is, you know, just like you find, People find their gurus or their spiritual preceptor or find that it, you know, it hits them like a lightning bolt like it did for me. You know, even though you can be in the periphery of, you know, whatever you're doing, you're like, oh, 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 okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah it's it's so beautiful, man. I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I had a loss for words almost on it. <laughs> but um, so... Uh, when you're doing your spiritual mm-hmm. practice, mm-hmm. Uh, like, uh, do you practice in a physical location here in Las Vegas? Is it all online? It's all online, yes. And especially since the pandemic, I had considered maybe uh, grabbing a little studio space and maybe um, offering it as um, a yoga space with a meditative space as well. But, you know, everything that's happened in the last two years kind of curtailed my thoughts of what I was trying to do with that. So everything I've done is, uh, online. I would, um, pre pandemic, I would fly to Chicago once a month, uh, to do a Sunday service 
at the temple. Oh wow, which was fantastic. Great. Yeah, I really enjoy that. I really enjoy seeing the people, and you know, it's just a, a beautiful community. You know, we come together and you do something like that. And it's not just myself doing the service. It's the people there really giving it, you know, the love and everything back to you. And it's very uh, reciprocal. So it's, that was very nice. But now it's all done uh, online. Uh, so I uh, film videos for the temple. I do a, uh, a Monday meditation once a week for the temple. And so they list that right on their website. Um, and I do a Sunday service uh, approximately once every other month for the temple now. Uh, a lot of the swamis, uh, they're done once every Sunday. The Sunday services are spiritual preceptor. It's usually a recorded one from when he was uh, uh, still alive and uh, uh, doing his teachings. And then it's generally uh, a lot of his disciples that are doing it. And there's a few of us that weren't direct disciples of Kriyananda that are doing Sunday services as well. That's pretty beautiful stuff, man. And it's, it's the uh, yogakriya.com uh, yeah, is the website. I believe that's, I should have had that in front of me for you. I'm so <laughs> sorry. I think I actually have it right Damn here. Is this the, the one right here? That is not. No. It should be. I uh, recognize these pictures uh, from uh, yes. Autobiography of a Yogi yes, as well. Yes. Um, it, they, I have the YouTube. Probably the, kriyayoga.com. Org. Org. Dot org. Oh, it is. It's, it's on the. See, I have the YouTube here. I put dot com That's instead of dot yes, org, right? Yes, indeed. That. And so, yeah. yeah, this is the YouTube you can go to mm -hmm. as well. Temple of Kriya mm -hmm. Yoga, uh, Goswami Kriyananda. Yes. And yes. then uh, let me find the uh, Kriya Yoga dot org and pull it up as well, so people know where to go for that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, and on there, that's where you can access uh, some of the Sunday services. Um, you'll be able to access, yeah, they're doing a, a beginning of meditation online course. If you scroll down a little farther, you'll see me here somewhere. There yeah, I there am. you right are. There. Yeah. Every um, Monday. <laughs> yeah. So every Monday. And, uh, I think you have to do a sign up for a newsletter or something like that, but then you tap on that. And every Monday it's, uh, I believe 1030 central is when they aired that one. Yeah, but there is, fantastic. you have access to a lot of different things uh, through the temple's website there, yes. Oh yeah, you got mm -hmm. a little shop going on, and then mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what are Sunday services? Yes, yes, you have one of the uh, uh, disciple swamis that uh, explains that very, uh, very nicely. Yeah, very easy to understand. That way you know exactly what the Sunday service is. That's beautiful. So, um, yeah, can you explain more about what Kriya Yoga actually is? Um, I know in like I read the mm. book Autobiography of a Yogi. Mm. I listen to Sadguru who talks about Kriya Yoga oh, a lot. Yes, yes. Um, but it, it's not really. Uh, I know in the book they say I can't really go into explaining it to you in this book because it can yeah. be misinterpreted. You need a teacher to actually explain this to you. And um, for the most part, you do. It's kind of hard to really put into a book. I think I mentioned at the beginning, it really is a spiritual science of the mind. And so you are taking the data of the earth, of the universe, of everything we've learned so far, and you're applying it to your life. And you're taking that data and you're theorizing on subjects as well. And you're able to observe uh, physics in different things that are going on in the real world to apply that to yourself and your mind and your teachings uh, that you are doing as well. Kriya Yoga is about expansion. It's not a closed book at all. It's about, you know, adding. There's no subtracting there. There's no closing a book like the Bible is a closed book. This is an add-on. Everything can be added on to because we're constantly learning. You know, each century is a completely different thought process. I mean, it wasn't even that long ago that, uh, you know, we didn't even know that there was uh, a Pluto out there or Neptune or Saturn or that, um, you know, the Earth wasn't the center of the universe. So that's why it's all about in a practical, physical, scientific, spiritual way, applying that to 
constantly growing and learning. Some of the thought processes are of uh, reincarnation. I apply it into the way of nothing in the universe is wasted. Uh, no atoms are wasted. They're always regenerated and recycled. So whether after I pass, if some of the atoms, some of the particles of my being, some of the energy that was with me is able to hold on to a uh, peaceful vibration, then fantastic. And whatever that becomes next, hopefully that that helps to shift that into a more harmonious um, scientifically thinking way. Not just a, uh, I guess some people would call it mama jumbo reincarnation. Yeah. Um, I personally would need a little more data than to, to be able to say that it's, there's proof of that, but uh, that's just me. I'm a data person. I <laughs> think more into the science part of my brain. Yeah. 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 So I hope that was a little more of something um, that you were looking for. Absolutely. And maybe if, so, if I was <laughs> curious about getting more involved in the Kriya Yoga, mm -hmm. uh, because I actually am curious about getting more involved in yeah. Kriya Yoga, yeah. um, what would I do to take the next step as far as uh, yeah. it's, I, I believe the term would be um, ordained in Kriya Yoga? Or yeah. Well, if you wanted to you know, go that far and to become a Swami, become a priest, uh, then sure you would uh, look to different, uh, there's different entities out there like i had the temple of kriya yoga i know there's a few others that are uh within the realm uh yogananda's uh temple is still there it's called the uh srf out um, in california right mm -hmm. yes uh that's the big those are the big boys yeah yeah and uh, i've been to their grounds it's beautiful absolutely amazing uh from uh, my understanding is uh, their priests are uh 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 uh, priest brahmacharyas so they're monastics they're all monastics men okay. and women uh, so they are are not householder priests like what would come from uh, the temple that i came from N now like for myself i could choose to be a uh, uh, swami brahmacharya and to not participate in being married and things like that which at to this moment i've chosen not to i choose to utilize my vital energy and directed ways uh but i would maybe you know see the temple of kriya yoga i would look at maybe a, an ananda center there's different ananda center ananda centers excuse me uh the srf and even if you look at them you might be able to see some subgroups of things where you could look and i would always maybe find a book on kriya yoga because that is genuinely the place where you're going to be able to read it and really kind of like, ah, oh, okay. More so maybe than uh, even sitting at, sitting somewhere and listening to somebody talk about it for an hour or maybe you and I talking about it in a podcast. I can give you the peripheries of it. I can give you the, you know, like the, a few little, you know, things I've given, but I don't know that I could express it fully uh, for you, for you or anyone else that we're talking to now to absorb it. Yeah. Yeah. Especially not in the amount of time we have. You sure. Know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, that these too, kind yeah. of things are so elaborate. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. No, that's, thank you very much. I yeah, appreciate it. Of course, that. Jason. Yeah. 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 And, um, if like in the temple that I go to, right, like we have practitioners and there, there's like Dharma teachers and sure. Zen masters and all this right, different thing. Right. right. But like, is there like a practitioner scale of the Kriya Yoga as well, where you're just kind of attending the the temple, not really a Swami or anything like that? Yes, I there's uh, I guess you would call them uh, the lay person. I, yeah. I guess, um, sure. There's a lot of people that go to the temple and they go to the temple uh, to study um, without any you know vision to become a priest. They just want to absorb and learn more. Um, you have people that join the seminary program. You have, there's a wonderful, uh, yoga teacher program there as well. So you have people that join the yoga teacher program. You have, uh, people that join uh, a meditation program and you be, you can, you know, become a certified, uh, meditation, uh, teacher, like through the temple of Kriya yoga. So there's so many different things that you can do. And it's just kind of maybe finding where your heart is leading, you know? And like I said, at the very, uh, front part of what we're talking about now maybe you just want to learn 
And so that's what a lot of people do. They'll either go buy some books at the temple or maybe they'll just go and sit at the temple and read and just start absorbing some of the energy and the teachings and the readings. And so there's many different uh, ways that people go to uh, uh, go about learning about it, uh, feeling it and you know, feeling better, trying to dissolve some of uh, themselves. Uh, like my, uh, my name is Larry, uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, try not to identify too much of yourself with who you are. You know, like, yeah. you know, everything isn't Larry. It's, uh, you know, you are really, truly the universe. And it's about seeing God in everything. Yeah. Yeah. There is no self, right? Mm -hmm. It's, uh, I was just finishing up an Alan Watts book, uh, oh, The wonderful. Wisdom of Ins Insecurity. Oh, yeah. And at the end, he does this big thing about um, the alcoholic who mm. wants to satisfy himself yeah. and you know, drinks to fulfill his desires mm. and find some kind of satisfaction for himself. And that only leads to suffering. He never finds satisfaction. He feels yeah. miserable because he's doing this to himself, mm. which spirals into a cycle. Mm. And he's constantly trying to just... Uh, fill this void within him yeah. and it's he goes and the void never gets filled because there is no self to fill there's the, yeah. the illusion of self and when you let go of all that yeah there you don't need anything to fill it you yeah. know and, and right yeah, yeah and, and, that, and that's i think one of the things i think i've heard uh uh my spiritual preceptor say uh yogananda spoke of one time the um the value of uh uh, a doors its emptiness. I think what he was trying to say at that time was just, you know, the doors, there were some new doors that were being made that weren't like solid wood anymore and they were hollow. And he was trying to make a point that the value is that there's space in there. And my spiritual preceptor spoke about that as well, about uh, one time he was in uh, Japan and um, uh, Zen master was teaching him a lesson. This is when he was much younger and he was pouring tea and the tea started getting all the way to the top and he like you know spoke out i was like it's filling it's spilling over it's spilling over and uh the zen master said yes just like your mind <laughs> so he was trying to teach him a lesson that you know just let it be and the value of anything is to let it expand and you know let more be and let it you know spell out and be free yeah yeah you can emanate this feeling of love within yourself. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and for, and for me, I, there's moments in my reality, man, where it's just so overwhelming. This, sure. this, this, uh, this expression of love and awareness within mm -hmm. myself that it just pours out of me, man. Sure. And I just give it away to everybody yeah. I see. And I, uh, and I, I, you know, it's really our true nature mm -hmm. and my, uh, my, my Zen master, he was talking about compassion and mm -hmm. discussing, um, the concept of like developing compassion yeah. and trying to work on building it. And he just goes, that's all bullshit. He goes, mm -hmm. compassion is your true nature. Yeah. You, you don't need to work on it. Yeah. You need to remove anything that's in its way. Yes. You, you need to just remove all these filters and this sense of ego and self. And it's all just blocking your true nature, which is just compassion right. and love. Right. And you just give that away to free for every, or for everybody, man. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's once you get to that place nothing really matters, man. And that's exactly Everything what is perfect. It, that's exactly what it is. I mean, that's absolutely what it is. It's, we, we kind of forget the, the concept. We, a lot of uh, theologies, you know, there's the God in the sky. Well, the God in the sky is way over there and you forget to see the God in everything. You know, so, you know, we look at uh, a plant or a tree or an animal or another human being uh, it, it's it's almost as if we have forgotten our own divinity, uh, the divine within ourselves, and also the divine in it, anything that we're looking at as well. Yeah, you it's know, all it's, God, man. It, it's all yeah. There's no separation. No. There's no you and me or this room and no. space. It's all one thing that's happening. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's all the it's all still the Big Bang unfolding itself all at once. Yes. Yeah. You know, we don't live in the universe we are the universe we are yeah i mean and the dat the data is there i mean what we're made of is truly stardust yeah it just is what it is you know we can't 
it's hard to argue with that. It's hard to argue with data. <laughs> you can, <laughs> but There's if the data has been verified, it. it's really hard to to argue with it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> it's all coming back to the point that it's like, you know, nothing's happening on accident, man. You know, it's all, it's all exactly where it's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we are all just water in a stream running around a rock, although a lot of people try to be the water that uh, stops the rock or pushes <laughs> the rock out of the way. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it just becomes such a much easier way of living if we just become the water running around the rock and just kind of go with the stream and just kind of go with the, go with the flow. It's not to say that we don't have hard times. I have hard times. Of course, you know, I, we're all our only perfection in, as humans is our imperfection and that, yeah. That is our perfection. That is. Yeah. So recognize that and, you know, just just do it, man. Yeah, imperfection yeah. is what creates the uniqueness in, in each of us, the unique inherent yeah. qualities that yeah. make us the character that we're playing at this moment, yeah. right? It's like you, you can take the perfect, the concept of, like, say, a perfect man or a perfect woman, yeah. and it's practically featureless and and flawless and mm -hmm. does no wrong and has no yeah. characteristics or personality and yeah. it's like you start putting in all these imperfections mm -hmm. and these little um you know character flaws mm -hmm. and um um just you know uh, crap your brain does that yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> word stuff i stopped drinking coffee this month <laughs> <laughs> and so the words are hard to come to my brain, yeah. but yeah, so, you, uh, which is one of my imperfections, but you slowly start chipping away at this thing. And then all of a sudden you have a real human being yeah. with all their glorious perfections, right. which is the unique qualities that make them them. It's not yeah. a negative thing that you have imperfections with yourself. That's mm -hmm. what you are yeah. almost. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's such a life process. You know, it, it, you find it in relationships too. I mean, we do it. When we're younger, we, you know, sometimes we kind of jump to this, this relationship to that one, never giving any chance to, uh, be one with not just our own faults, but maybe the faults of others too. And again, recognize it as, a, an actual divinity or an imperfection of a perfection of our imperfection, but you know, it's okay. I mean, we kind of find our way or don't find our way to the, you know, relationship that uh, we really should be at. And uh, hopefully we all find our way to that. Um, I, I, I pray for everybody to find that uh, peace, that joy, that love. Uh, not that uh, the movie, uh, how they complete me. Well, you should be complete yourself first. And yeah. then when that other complete person is there, you make just a more magnificent, complete circle of... Uh, infinity yeah yeah that was the revelation that helped me like mm. quit everything all yeah. the smoking and the yeah. the any kind of like habits that i had mm. in my life was yeah. the uh i just came to realization that everything is mm. is already perfect yeah. it's already exactly how it's supposed to be yeah. i'm i'm exactly how i'm supposed to be yeah, i don't need this moment to be any more or less than it is yeah. And so I don't need to be adding these things in, you know, I don't need a drink. I don't need to smoke. I don't need to d imbibe in any way, shape mm -hmm. or form because everything just is, is wonderful. It's just my perception of the, the reality mm -hmm. around me, the perception of the moment thinking that it was lacking in some way, yeah. which is really just the illusion of Maya that's going on. Mm -hmm. Right. And once you get past that, you remove that filter, you're just like, it all just dissolves in your hands, man. It does. And it's like, yeah, I just, there was no. There was nothing to it at that point. It mm -hmm. wasn't like, oh man, this is going to be a rough road. It was just like, yeah, yeah, it's gone now. It just is. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and I I owe it all to you know meditation, mindfulness mm -hmm. practices, and this yeah. this beautiful thing that that is free for everyone. It is. And it's like it's your true nature, really, is what I feel. It is, and that's the thing. It's free for everybody. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. And just find it. Yeah. Yeah. It's right there. It always has been. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it, man. It's like, uh, 
Yeah, I don't get to have these conversations with a lot of people very often, man. Yeah, me either. Yeah, I really appreciate you, my friend. We live in Vegas, man. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I moved out here, man. You know, I was really a materialist and very much an atheist and pressing in on all my desires and pushing yeah. into this world of illusion and self and yeah. um, indulgence, man, mm -hmm. thinking that um, I'll just push it as hard as I can. You know, I, I work in the entertainment industry mm -hmm. and... Uh, and I just, I, I pushed it as hard as I possibly could and did all the things as, as hard as I possibly could, man. Yeah. And it was all so empty. It was yeah. all so empty. Yeah. And I just was constantly like, what am I, you know, what am I doing wrong here, man? Yeah. Like I'm, I have all the stuff, you yeah. know, and they got the drugs and the women and the music and the, and you know, I'm, I had decent money and you know, good, sh you know, everything yeah. was great. Yeah. You know, as far as the American dream and mm -hmm. materialistic ideologies is concerned, it was like, there's all the stuff. Yeah. You yeah. know, two cars and a house and, and all the, everything you could ever desire. And it was just, yeah. it's just empty, man. And that, yeah, you find that that is not the thing that fills the cup. That's not the thing that fills the void, the mind. It's just, it doesn't. It's, and as you said, it is very empty. And so you're, I see a lot of people, it's always seeking that next, yeah. that next car, that next house, that next house has to be bigger. The next girlfriend has to be better. The next boyfriend has to be better or hotter. It's, it's just this nonstop cycle of got to have, I guess, yeah. it's, instead of, yeah. Yeah. And just be right. Ram Dass, just be here now, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. I love him. And yeah. he does a great thing about that where, you know, you're going out on, going out on the town and you're going to go dancing and then what are we going to eat after this? And as you're eating, it's like, what movie do you guys want to see? And in the yeah. middle of the movie, you're like, I think we should get ice cream. And while you're eating the ice yeah. cream, it's like, we should go home and make love. And while you're making love, you're like, what am I going to do in the morning? And yeah. it's like, you're never right here. It's always, what's the next right. thing we're doing? Right. And you're never just appreciating the moment. As, yeah. And it's, it's true beauty that's happening in front of you. And yeah. actually like, uh, you know, just content contentment yeah. with this is all I I, yeah. I don't even need this and I'm yeah. grateful for it it's the present moment I mean every single thing that's one of the biggest practices and teachings that I try to express when I am teaching or talking I speak about uh, some of my Sunday services I talk about ahimsa a lot I'll talk about divine love a lot but one of the other things I talk about a lot is presence because presence really is where it's at. And presence will bring you almost everything that you need. It will bring you that calmness, that love, that divinity, the, uh, that sense of being, belonging, um, oneness with everything, with everyone. It just does. I mean, when you truly find yourself in that space of presence, like, you know, honestly, right here, I couldn't even, like right now, if I consciously am thinking about it, couldn't tell you how long we've been sitting here talking mm -hmm. because I am so present here with you that, you know, the walls really aren't here. It's just kind of like this little, you know, cosmic bubble yeah, that's here. I feel it. And if people could find that in themselves, but you do insert a lot of things that are external as well. A, a think of a concert, think of your favorite concert, think of your favorite band. Oh, yeah. If you're in that moment, I mean, nothing else in the world is happening. You're just like glued, you're just mesmerized. That's being in the present moment, too. If you could express to people to say, hey, you remember when you were watching, say, Paul McCartney or you went to see Queen live or, you know, a, a newer band today, whatever, you know, think of that moment where you were just like right there and like, Oh yeah. Yeah. Unless they're holding up their phone and recording it, then you're not really yeah, that present. No, don't do that. But yeah. <laughs> get one song. One song. Yeah. Put your phone one away. Song man. And then just put it away. Yeah. But yeah, I guess you know what I mean and uh, you know, your people know what I'm trying to convey, I hope as well. Yeah. That happened to me big time when I went and saw Rush perform, mm -hmm. man. And uh, they played for three hours straight. Yeah. And when they were like really done with their like second yeah. encore or whatever, yeah. I was like, that's it. You know, like that yeah. was my, cause I wasn't looking at my phone or what time yeah. it was. 
You're I like, was just like, they play, man. They just went on stage, and I looked down. I go, oh my god, it's been three hours. Yeah, yeah but we were just so lo- caught up in the moment, and everything was just so perfect the whole time, yeah. and it just, it's gone. Yeah, you know, and it was just so perfect. It was beautiful, and I just, I always remember that moment of of realization when mm. I looked down and saw how long it had actually yeah. been, and I felt like nothing at all, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's um, it's unbelievable. Yeah, I I had. A really big experience of that uh, when I, I married my niece and Dominic um, in November and I, I performed the ceremony but myself uh, Dom Stephanie we the, the whole time the whole thing we said from the moment of the ceremony till we left we were like did that happen <laughs> like right? did it just start didn't this, didn't this just happen and so we talked about it a week later where that there we were all like that was the weirdest thing you know talk about being so completely in a present moment that was one of the most present uh times i've had in my life because time was of completely no essence but it felt like a dream and that's almost what it should feel like you should be so present that you think about it later you're like wow was that a dream wow that was a really good dream yeah wasn't that cool and then you can remember it in that way. And then it just brings even more love and more calmness and more divinity and more uh, to it. Yeah. Yeah, it's all a dream, man. Mm-hmm. It's all a dream. You know, there's no like the conscious waking experience is, is I mean, at this point for me personally, like that is so similar to my dream state mm-hmm. or, you know, uh, it's, I, I don't really consider them to be a separate thing anymore man yeah. you know there's just like awareness and the the experience of awareness whatever yeah. that the circumstances may be man mm-hmm. and uh and one of the things i've been trying to practice more is even uh in the dream state right you can get mm-hmm. lost in that sure and being present even in that um unconscious state of mind where you're, everything's yeah. just sporadic and going mm-hmm. and there's no rules and anything can happen and it's like we're going to conduct ourselves uh in a, in a really proper manner in this place yeah. and really like remove all this you know desire and mm-hmm. like like sexual dreams yeah. and all this crazy chaos and yeah. violence that occurs and such like that that happen in random moments and yeah. in the sleep state and it's like mm-hmm. we're going to be this aware being in all of it man yeah you know because there's no real i don't know but and well, and when you are present, when you make these choices to be as present as we're talking about, you enjoy things so much more. Oh yeah. I mean, it becomes even more. Uh, I don't know what the right word is for it, but it just becomes more special. I, I'm I'm trying to think of a better word, but I would say divine. Honestly, divine. Yeah. Sure, exactly. Right. And no matter what it is, whether you're just sitting there. Uh, with a friend having coffee or if you're, you know, you and I talking together or going into, you know, deeper subjects of, you know, people who are in relationships when they're being physical together. Most people don't grasp that sense of being that present together. And if they just do that, oh my goodness, you can, you can elevate the experience of the relationship so much more. And that takes it out into your normal part of the waking relationship when you're having disagreements it helps you to be calmer and respond in a more harmonious way to each other oh yeah and and want to like really you know look at yourself you know yeah i did say that wrong honey i'm sorry or you know maybe i'm not sure that i said that wrong how do you feel you know just respond in a better way oh yeah yeah it's definitely helped me do that i i know i used to have a big rage problem Mm -hmm. and like i just I just lose it. You just, yeah. you're not you anymore. There's like this rage uh, personality inside of you. Because yeah. really, I mean, you go through life and there's all these, like, it's almost schizophrenia. Mm-hmm. You know, there's like this, this overly elated person, this rage yeah. person, this depressed person. Yeah. You know, there's all these personalities that exist within you yeah. and they start taking over mm-hmm. your, your consciousness and your awareness yeah. experience. And, uh, and now I find myself when I'm like in a disagreement with, with Angela or something mm-hmm. like that, it doesn't go into any kind of anger. Anger is not a part of it, you know? Yeah. And like, even if I have to say something that I know she's not going to hear, it's yeah. always just like, 
I love you so much. Yeah. I don't mean this the wrong way, you know, as opposed to just like throwing things at her. Yeah. Uh, that that come at uh, just you know spewing things you don't really mean out of your mouth yeah. just to like sink it into people and yeah. stuff like that. It's like, there's just this concept I would love for you to grasp at this moment. I love you. And I, I know I'm not trying to hurt you. That it's, kind of, that kind of discussion. That's like as bad as it gets for us. I love you. And I don't mean this yeah. in a negative way, but here's the thing I need to say to you mm. as opposed to, ah, rah, 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 you know, been swearing my, and, and been there. Yeah. yeah. I've been there. I'm a human. Of course. Yeah. yeah. That's the human. It's, that's the, the instant reaction that we go to, right? It's that's like the re- default program settings right. of the mind. It's reactive emotionality. Yeah. It's really what it is. Yeah. Reactive. Yeah. It's reactive emotionality. There's nothing wrong with emotions. Emotions are great and can be great. It's the emotionality when you, expand it into that that realm that's when it becomes a problem and then becomes even more of a problem when it becomes reactive emotionality what what we were just talking about yeah 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 and so it's you have to maybe kind of see it from out out here looking at yourself like Ugh, what the heck is that right <laughs> that's yeah. not me yes it was yeah. oh damn i better do something about that yeah <laughs> that's it and, as, and when you're present and you're observing mm-hmm. as opposed to like being the thoughts you're yeah. observing the thoughts yeah and you're like conscious of the words that are coming out of your mouth yeah. as opposed to just letting whatever's in here just yeah. spew unfiltered through it yeah. and like uh, mix with any mm-hmm. kind of emotions you're experiencing yeah. at the time and it just that's it's not a good way to conduct yourself no. you know and it's like you might feel entitled to have these emotions and sure you know i, I mean i'm not going to take that away from anybody yeah you are entitled to feel the way you feel yeah. and express yourself however you want to mm. but um once you get to the place where you can recognize that this is just the mm. thing i'm feeling it's not me yeah. this is just a thought i'm having yeah. but i'm not my thoughts yeah and it's like and the only thing I need to express to the world truly is love, man. And yeah. you can really curb that really heavily, man. Yeah. It, oh my goodness. It yeah. makes such a difference for all your relationships and everybody mm. you ever come in contact with, man. Everything and everybody. Yeah. 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 That's actually one of the practices we did in some of the retreats. It was, we not forced, but we were taught to look at ourselves in situations, think about situations that we've been in and be that little bubble floating there and watch yourself. Wow. Mm. Talk about a uh, mind changer. Talk about a uh, thought changer. It it is. It was, it was a beautiful, brilliant practice. And there was a, 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 it's kind of a, I guess a beginner's meditation. I don't really know if, if you want to call it beginner's meditation, but mm-hmm. it's to watch, um, you know, treat your thoughts like bubbles and just kind of watch them, you know, bubble and go by yeah. and just, you know, let them pop and just recognize them and know that they're there. Yeah. Sort of, um, noting, mm-hmm. you know, where you just say, and that's another thought. Yeah. yeah. One of the ones I've been using with that too, my, um, my, uh, my master came up with this analogy of the train car passing by, mm-hmm. um, yes. his story, if I can get it out quickly enough yeah. is, um, this guy got the easiest job in the world, you know? He goes, there's going to be trains passing by this location. All I need you to do is count how many freight cars there are. Yeah. That's it. Easiest job in the world, just count the cars. And as he's counting the cars, all of a sudden, uh, this deluxe passenger car comes by, and all these people are having fancy dinners, and they're all dressed nicely. And he's like, <laughs> this is a freight train. What are these people doing yeah. on this? This makes no sense. Yeah. And he's lost. And he goes, yeah. what? what number was I on, you know, and he's totally lost and he can't even do the simplest job in the world because this, um, you know, abnormality came through real quick and it distracted him. He got caught with it. He's following that car now, as opposed to just staying on task of like being focused, being present and counting the cars, man. And I took that into a meditation Mm -hmm. after that story. You know, we, we, we sat after the Dharma talk and, uh, I haven't told him this either. I should talk to him about it when I see him next. Uh, but yeah, I took that that story he told and I turned it into um, a counting mechanism. Mm-hmm. So as I sit and I'm following my breath rising and falling, mm-hmm. when a thought pops up, I count the cars. And I go, one. Yeah. And then it just immediately, the recognition and then the counting of it, yeah. it it's just gone so much faster than than just the noting process of it. Right. And, it's, and, uh, and then I'm just back 
you know, back to my breath going and then another one pops up and I go, look at that. That's number two right there. And then yeah. I, it's just a thing I just came up with recently. That's and I awesome. know other people probably have a similar concept to me, but I just, yeah. I stumbled into that. It worked really well. I yeah. thought I'd share it with people. Absolutely. That, that's absolutely wonderful. I hadn't heard that one before, but, and that's the thing about meditation and what you're talking about, what I've been talking about too, you know, everybody kind of finds their own little you know, niche of way that helps them. And that's, that's wonderful to share with people, man. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So you said a beginner's way of meditating. I'd love to hear an advanced way of meditating. Well, you know, I don't really know that there's an advanced <laughs> way. I mean, you know, people talk about transcendental meditation and things like that. Well, all meditation is transcendental. That's yeah, what right. meditation is. Uh, it's, it seems like sometimes we just try to fancy up the thing that just is what it is. You know, meditation just is what it is. It's a constant practice. Uh, I guess guided meditation, that would, they call that kind of a beginner's, you know, guided meditation, the one that we were just talking about. Um, I guess a more advanced one would be, you know, from the temple, it would be just forced to sit. And not in a mean way, but like certainly in the... uh, uh, the seminary, we would, you know, sit for an hour and you would sit for an hour and meditate and you're not getting any cues. You're not getting any, this, any of that, you know, return to your breath, you know, things like that. No, you just, you know, sit there and meditate and deal with yourself basically. And I guess that would be an advanced meditation. Uh, you know, some of the yogis in caves, of course, will sit there and just, you know, meditate, but really meditation, and you probably know this too, you're not, you know, I'll sit in meditation for for 45 minutes or an hour. You're not in meditation that whole time. No, you're not. No, you, you're, you're going in and out. Yeah. And that's really what meditation is. It's like, you know, you'll kind of bubble up and all of a sudden you're there. It's like, you're there. And all of a sudden, some sudden something will happen. You're like, Oh, Oh, check it out. Okay. And so they're, and they're returning to the breath. And then you'll be there for a little while. And then, so meditation kind of, you know, is a nice, it kind of pulsates, uh, like, a almost like a, a pulsar, not as fast, you know, a pulsar is like, whoop, 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 whoop. but to use a universal term, you know, something, you know, in physics, uh, it's, that light that kind of just is, it's this one present moment. And then it just kind of like filters out a little bit. And then you have to like bring it back in again, or maybe even a black hole. Um, it just kind of <laughs> collapses in harmoniously on itself and it just becomes a singularity. And that's that point of meditation, that one point in this we try to stay in as long as we can. Oh yeah. And then it just expands out again. It's okay. Yeah. It's all right. You know, none of the best, if you want to call them the best yogis on this earth, are not in meditation the whole time. Yeah. They're meditating, but they're not in oneness. They're not in that singular moment the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, I find myself, um, especially when I go to the temple and we do long sits like you're talking Mm -hmm. about in silence with each other, um, I'll just be like floating almost, you know. It's just I feel a sense of weightlessness and... Um, like visual hallucinations a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. not something extravagant like you took a psychedelic or anything, but like, just like, uh, almost like purple waves of of, mm-hmm. of uh, whatever it is pouring over me, man, and yeah. just this weightless feeling, and I'm just like, oh man, you know, yeah. and the second I recognize, <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's a thought, and yeah. then that thought leads to more, and then and yeah. then I'm like, no, 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 I can get back to that. Let me just yeah. focus harder, and it's like it's not a it's not a feat of strength that you're pulling off, man. No, and uh, that's why it's a meditation. Yeah, practice. That's it. Yeah, I'll find you know. Yeah, I'll find myself getting there, and then it's like that's it. That was it for this one. You know, you're gonna yeah. come down from this, and we'll sit and yeah. be quiet for the rest of the time, and just you know be calm. But it's like you got there for a second, and. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be like, I can get back up there. I was just there a second ago. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun, man. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. It is. Those moments are amazing. Yeah, I didn't think it was possible. 
you know i thought it was all here's you know whatever people talking about it you know and going oh no it's the best thing ever and it's just and it is yeah and you can even i you know i it's hard to put data on astraling but i mean you know people talk about it and i i know i've been there before and you know you kind of detach from your body and i don't know if you're floating or what you're doing i don't know what the heck you're doing but you know you can observe and feel and see things when you should you think you're sleeping or think you're doing something that's that's a pretty oh yeah crazy cool moment to be into yeah Yeah. (laughs) well i mean you get to this place where you recognize that this Mm -hmm. this thing isn't really what i am you know there's this it's almost like it's receiving a a radio signal of some sort Mm -hmm. or it's occupied by some sort of energy force man right. but it's like whatever it is it's coming from somewhere else and it's yeah. like so the concept of that not being right here in this body for a moment is really it's not a big step yeah. once you once you really have that awareness and that uh perception of how you how you function yeah well it's almost like we're all a bunch of uh you know, walking carbon antennas for the universe. Yeah. You know, the universe to float its energy through us and, you know, do do its thing. And we're here to receive it and channel it and let it, you know, kind of get out there too. Yeah. Because yeah. really nothing can exist without being observed, man. No. no you know, nothing's actually, no. it's like if you have this, there's this concept of like the multiverse, right? But mm-hmm. if there's a universe that comes into being mm-hmm. uh, hypothetically mm-hmm. and nothing um, has any awareness or any way to perceive the universe, is the universe, can you even have said that the universe ever existed in the first place? If nothing yeah. ever observed it, nothing ever experienced it, it's like, no, it doesn't exist. Yeah. And there's no way to say that it exists. Yeah. There's no way to, there's no data for it. There's mm-hmm. no one ever saw the thing. So it's like, mm-hmm. No, it doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. Hypothetically, maybe you can say it might have, but mm-hmm. you know, without without an observer, without the focal point of awareness looking out into the universe, this universe itself can't even be. And I think that's really, you know, what we're doing. We're bringing all of this yeah. into existence just yeah. with a with just with our consciousness, with our awareness, with yeah. the ability to observe it. And I think that's part of the oneness that uh, we have with the universe, with divinity, with. Uh, you know, again, everything in the universe is God, is the expansion of the singularity, the, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah. It is. yeah. And God's just the word, you know what it's, I mean? It is It's a like word, some people, sure. especially in the West, want to say it's, you know, whenever you say the word God, it's like mm. uh, the, the man sitting on the throne, mm. this mon- monarchical uh, entity that's like yeah. watching over everything. And it's like, yeah. really, it's just there's this place where words stop functioning, you know, and it's just completely ineffable. And the one term across all philosophies and religion, you can, we can all like agree to and point at the same thing, even though it's not the thing itself. Right. Mm -hmm. Is the word God, man. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's such a interesting word, man. For me a lot, um, as I came into the practice, it always, triggered a unique sensation in my mind to Mm. know the word god Mm -hmm. and uh the concept of it all man Mm -hmm. and i get more and more comfortable with it as i go along recognizing that that's what i am what all this is you know it's not a there isn't like i don't know i don't know what there is right like the other end of it is you know socrates the only thing i know is i know nothing i mean i don't feel like there's a man in the sky watching Mm -hmm. me do all this i feel like if anything i'm the man in the sky itself or there isn't one, but I am the entity, the awareness of all yeah. things, experiencing all things uh, yeah. through this game that we're playing. Yeah. Our our spiritual preceptor, Goswami Kriyananda, uh, spoke of God as a mechanism. Yeah. And he says a lot of people in the West find that a hard concept to grasp a hold of. That's a mechanism of everything that you just said, which... Uh, I thought was amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really like the Taoist concept of mm. reality. It's, mm. it's, you know, nature. It's the way of things, man. You yeah. know, it's easy to grasp, easy to want, understand. That was probably one of the most uh, amazingly fulfilling uh, parts of my studies when I was studying different theologies, even though it's not theology, but different religions of the world. I, just grasped a hold of that one it was really uh it felt like me my whole life 
it felt like me and my grandmother's backyard, um, just hanging out with animals and, you know, uh, hanging out in her garden and, you know, pulling a carrot up out of her garden, wiping it off of my pants and eating it and just sitting there. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> just being one with everything. Yeah. You know, those were, those were the happiest moments of my life. It was honestly, for me, it was, you know, trying to be a teenager and doing all the other things and being in relationships. It was, you know, trying to, it was figuring out that, you know, wow, that really just isn't me. Yeah. It just isn't me. I'm like, I don't feel the oneness with things. I always felt separated, even when I was in relationships with people. Uh, thankfully, I'm able to be friends with basically all of them. But I think they, most of them probably recognize that in me too. It's like, okay, Larry, there's something else for you. I don't know what it is, but I guess it's not us. And so, wow, thankfully I found it and <laughs> am able to like know that uh, everything's good. Yeah. And I found that oneness and that oneness is with me. I, you know, I haven't shut the door on anything, but thankfully I've found that moment of presence and oneness with myself where I can actually bring it back out into everything that I do, you know, truly, truly, truly in a divine present way these days. Yeah. Yeah. We take, yeah. we take the love of the universe, man, within ourselves oh, and then yeah. we just spread it all over, man. Yeah. yeah. And it's the only thing there is to do. You yeah. know, it's the, um, the Bodhisattva path, man. Yes. In Buddhism, right? It's yes. like you don't just hang out in Nirvana mm -hmm. once you once you recognize how to get there and, and no. you you come back and you help everybody figure out how That's to get it. there on their own terms, man. That's it. Yeah. You know, try to be that example. Hopefully, you know, you can you know, do the things that you need to do and you know be that imperfect human being that you are and I am and still will be. And, yeah. you know, I have uh, friends of mine that I work with, you know, sometimes I'll, you know, be in the back and they'll like, Oh, Swami, what are you doing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, ah, yeah, so I'm still human. I'm still human. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be doing That's it fine. for the, for the rest of this existence, man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Just trying to hone the practice and, yeah. and get better and better. But yeah. They'll always be there, man. Those imperfections and those they are, you will. know, um, it's like, it's like when someone comes up and pushes one of your buttons you thought you had gotten rid of, man. You yeah. know, and you're just like, um, like, oh, that's still there. That's, you know, what is that doing there, man? You know, I thought I was this. I thought I was this peaceful cat, you know. And uh, so you go instead of like, you know, getting upset with the yeah. person or whatever, you go, thank you for showing me that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're helping me deal with my karma and figuring out where I yes. where I'm weak and where yes. I can work on. Man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Everybody, everything, everybody's a teacher. Oh yeah, they are. Everything you we, do, we need to look at it that way. And a lot of us don't look at it that way, that the situation or another person is really a teacher for us, yeah. teaching us uh, something about ourselves. Yeah, yeah. we're yeah. all walking each other home. Maybe. We are. Yeah. And the ego, for the most part, doesn't allow us to see it or look at it that way. Oh, it doesn't want it. It doesn't want it. No. It wants no. to be in control, man. Yes. It wants, it wants to know that it's real. It yes. wants to know that it knows. Yes. That's always the hard one, man. It's it's, my ego knows. Yeah. You I gotta, can do this. I can do this myself. <laughs> 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 You're not teaching me anything. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, breaking that thing down. That was, uh, I'm still, it's still fresh to me, you yeah. know, since it's only been a few years, man. Yeah. And that was a, that was a total trip, man. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of denial and roadblocks and interesting things that were sure. like locked in there. Just solid, solid as stone, mm -hmm. man. Like yeah. beliefs, yeah. um, which I don't have anymore. Yeah. I like to say I have a lot of ideas and concepts that I toy with and play around with. Mm -hmm. And ultimately I know nothing. And the hardest thing for me to get rid of were my beliefs mm -hmm. in things, things that I state, these are the fundamental versions of reality that I exist in. Yeah. And if it doesn't agree with these beliefs that I have, then yeah. I have to deny it. Yeah. I can't even think about it or talk yeah. about it. And, uh, and that's all the ego man trying to remain mm -hmm. in control and, and, just be like this is 
crazy nonsense you're yeah. getting into and just come back to me we're just gonna we're just gonna live in the material world and nothing is yeah yeah just nihilistic man yeah it's that concept again of having room for you know god or guru or thought or expansion or uh, more love more divine love it, it's just having room having being able to expand and as bruce bruce lee said uh be formless and shapeless like water yeah well, let your thoughts be that too i mean let them be able to expand and be able to you know shape into when if you're presented with you know a solid thought process of of data you know allow yourself to see things in a different way allow yourself to um you know, grasp another concept. You know, if you're a musician, maybe, maybe this symbol is better. You know, <laughs> maybe this bass guitar is better. I don't like these strings. Oh, I don't like that. Well, try it. Yeah. You know, give something a try. Yeah. I, I don't know. You know, maybe you don't. Maybe you think you don't like this particular fruit. Well, give it a try. Oh wow, I love it. Yeah. You just don't know. Just, you know, man, be willing to try and accept and. You know, things that are harmonious, you know, I'm not ta talking about things that, you know, ob of course that are inharmonious and yeah. we all know what inharmonious things are. Don't go smoke crystal meth after this. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Don't need to try that one. We no, all know that's no. terrible. <laughs> uh, yeah. But no, I totally get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me about your yes. uh, mala because I was watching a thing about those specific beads mm. and the energy they bring to your mm. character and everything like that I, I don't know if you can elaborate on the, the mala you're wearing well the mala I'm with, specifically to address it it's uh, what I was ordained with and what what they do uh, they they choose specific beads they don't really tell me exactly they keep it with them the swamis um, they meditate on them and they lift the vibration of it. And then they chant uh, a mantra, which I'm not sure of which one they did. And they chant my guru name that they're going to give me at ordination. Okay. And so this, every mala that we're, we are ordained with is specific to the uh, Swami that uh, is ordained. Now, you can buy malas, of course. And when you buy a mala... I would say you should look up to see what uh, seed uh, was uh, used, um, what the particular manufacturing was. Make sure it's something that you feel like will vibrate harmoniously with you. And you might get it and be like, ah, this just doesn't feel right. And you might, you might, that might be the way. I would always suggest buy, uh, if you're buying one for yourself to uh, do it in person, feel the energy of it, touch it, feel it. and see if it works for you yeah and like for mine as soon as they put it on my neck it just felt natural and right i was like oh and it was like yeah this feels great so that was the process for me i'm not sure if that's uh, the answer you were looking for or the question you're asking i'm sorry yeah no that's a great answer man okay. i was gonna say i think they're called uh I, I was looking it up here rude rock uh rudraksha beads yes rudraksha yes. seeds from the yes. himalayas is that what yes. that is yeah yes. mm-hmm Yes. Yeah, they definitely have a. I was watching a whole thing on it um, the other day, and I was I, the second I saw him when he walked up, I was like, "That's that thing I was yeah. watching about, yeah. man." And it's, they have a certain power and, and energy uh, around them. Yes, and when we're meditating, we um, we are taught to if we can, if it's accessible, if we want to, to yeah. you know, you know, let each be go like this as we're. And meditation i prefer not to yeah. uh i do it there's in the middle of conversations do, i've been rolling yes. them i've been rolling this one beautiful this whole time yeah beautiful. yeah uh, it's, it keeps me focused and present yes yeah. very nice very nice yes that i have tried it um it doesn't for me now if i'm doing something different not in meditation i probably could it would probably be beneficial for me to like take it off like you're doing like this. And that is a very wonderful practice that I see different people do. I love that. That's, that's amazing. Um, but in my general meditation, I find some people will sit in mudra. It just depends on how they're sitting, you know, full Lotus, half Lotus, um, on their knees for myself. It's 
you know, in Lotus, With hand the, hands on lap. Yeah, that's you where it is thumbs. for me. I do just like this. I oh, just like that. Okay. Yeah, I don't even do any anything at all. It's just simply like that. For me, I find that to be the most um, harmonious way, and I've tried many different ways of doing it. That's the one that centers me the best. That's the one that keeps my spine, the sysmonic channels running, the energies running up and down the spine, everything expanding out of the crown chakra. I feel like it elevates my uh, third eye and lets it shine bright. You you have to find your own way, and you, yeah. you will, and everybody will. I mean, but I would suggest everybody to you know try many different uh, methods, uh, you know, of mudras or way of doing it. The one thing I would say, don't, I, I don't want to use those words, but don't. Um, <laughs> you'll block yourself off to have your hands collapsed on your legs. Yeah. Palms down. Palms up. You always want the palms up if it's accessible. Uh, there could be, you know, medical conditions that don't allow that. And if that's the case, you can always just lay them as you can. Maybe uh, if they... If your uh, people can see us just like this, whatever you need to do um, that is accessible, even if it's like this, um, just try not to collapse them down or have your palms down on anything. Yeah, that was receiving probably, the energy from above, right? Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah. And if you and I've done the practice like I was doing, I did. Um, the inner engineering course that that mm. guru puts out and he does this whole thing where yes. he goes through all these different ways to sit and he and so he does the the palms down yeah. and he goes now breathe in and focus on your lungs right mm -hmm. and he goes now flip your palms now breathe in and focus on how you know and he goes can you see that it's like you really do oh, notice a difference your you lungs do. expand more just the simple the simple twisting mm -hmm. like that brings just it brings everything into alignment it does yeah as opposed yeah. to this there's kind of a, a tendency to slouch almost mm -hmm. and yeah it's it's amazing how just twisting the wrists upward yeah it changes everything yeah man. yeah yeah and for me i sit when i like to sit um i do um similar like you're doing there but then we do mm -hmm. the thumbs together mm -hmm. in, uh, in the buddhist temple they taught yes. me this one and yes. then you want to their, their whole concept is you want to be able to slip a piece of paper in between it. Oh, okay. And so you don't want them really touching, but you don't want to be pushing right. a lot of pressure. And I find myself doing that where I'll put pressure on them to yes. keep them together. Yes. And it's like you want to, and so it gives you this this object of focus yeah. in the palms of your hand where yeah. you're just just like spark yeah. plugs, man. Right. Like just sitting right across from each other. Sitting there. Yeah. yeah. Just like a feather touching another feather. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. And that's a great way for me. Like I, I love that that practice to focus during the meditation because that's what it is, right? It's like it's like mm -hmm. taking your mind and putting it on an mm -hmm. object of focus, whatever mm -hmm. it might be. The breath, sure. right? There's the, always the the following the diaphragm rising mm -hmm. and falling is the mm -hmm. classic, the thing you know, going back to your yes. breath. Yes. Like you're saying, the thumbs together, right? Yes. Or maybe it's um, something you're working on as as like, um, have you seen? Headspace Guide to Meditation on Netflix. No, I have not. It's beautiful, man. No, I haven't. This, I really this, haven't. Yeah. yeah, this monk is, uh, he's doing really short meditations, like 20 minute episodes. Mm -hmm. He talks about it for 10 minutes. Yeah. And then he does like a 10 minute um, meditation. So I've been, I've been doing the meditations the last oh, wow. few nights and I really like it. Yeah. Um, it's great for people to get into. Yeah. And uh, so the, the one that I just did um, last night was... Uh, focusing on someone you're having a hard time with in life right that's mm. not the object of focus and then right yeah. you want to send love their way and yeah. absorb any negative energy that person might be dealing with and then mm. exhale love back to them and then breathe in it and it's a, there's yeah. all kinds of different objects of focus yeah. you can bring into into mind that's pretty you're doing cool it. i gotta check that out it sounds yeah. very very interesting i always love you know checking out and seeing new things and seeing what people are doing i i personally don't uh, project a lot of you know videos or things out there myself. I do for the temple, um, like we talked about. You know, every Monday for meditations, things like that. Uh, for myself, I am a uh, quite introverted, so I kind of keep in a, a small space to myself, it's, except when I'm at work. Uh, I work on the strip, which kind of blows people's minds sometimes. Yeah. Uh, you work on the strip, really? Yeah, I work in a big resort. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I really do. That's where the money yeah, is, it, man. It's yes, you know, you know, a priest, a swami, anybody. You have to have money to survive. Yeah. I mean, it, it just, but it, it has allowed me to live a nice life. But 
on topic. <laughs> you know, it's just, uh, you know, I don't even where, know where my topic went. Where, where did I go? Right. I, I just lost myself. See, there's, I went out of the present moment. I did. <laughs> I truly did. <laughs> and what took me out of the present moment, uh, I talked about work. I yeah. talked about being on this trip. And that genuinely brought me out of the present moment. Yeah. Wow. That's fun. See, it's, it's your podcasters yeah. got to like see it genuinely happen in real time. Yeah. Yeah. Money is just a distraction, man. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's important as well. You know, you got to eat and keep a roof over your head. Yeah, it's a necessary but, part uh, of life. But wow. But man, yeah. Goodness once gracious. it becomes, a, I, I love, I, I listen to Ram Dass a lot. <laughs> and one of the things he talks about is like whenever he, whenever he was getting really like spiritual mm -hmm. defined, like making progress and yeah. he's just, just, you know, he's like, I'm on the mountain yeah. with my guru and I'm just crushing it yeah. and uh, having a great conversation. He turned to me and goes, so how much money did you make in America? He'd say yeah. stuff like that to him. Yeah. He'd just be like, just rip him right <laughs> out of it. And he's like, now my brain's thinking about money. And he's oh, like, and I'm, yeah. I'm not there anymore. Yeah. And he just, we would just demolish all the hard work I'm yeah. doing and yeah. to be present and be, you know, yeah. aware. Isn't it incredible? And that's what I mean. Everything that we just talked about. I just gave you the perfect inadvertent example of that very thing. Yeah. And that's why it is a practice. That's why it is so important to pay attention to ourselves and, and truly be present and then recognize that when we are not being present, when I just wasn't for a moment, something that took me out of it to return back to it. Yeah. 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 So cool. Yeah. That's perfect, man. I'm actually kind of like excited that that <laughs> happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's exactly what happens to us every yes. day, man. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I was just, I, I was just having a conversation with a good friend of mine about this. He's going through some stuff and, um, and I'm always, uh, I always like to make myself available for people to talk to about these kind of things. Yeah. And I actually care and I listen and I'm not yeah. going to sit here and talk over them and, you know, let them get their thing going, you know, and, yeah. and give them good advice about how to love themselves in the world. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so that was the thing is, um, there's this distraction that occurs to us, the, the illusion again, Maya, mm -hmm. everything that's mm -hmm. going on around you, that's there to like pull you away from yeah. yourself and your in the, the, um, awareness within you, man. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we, uh, we got to get back in touch and have these practices in place yeah. to bring us right back right yeah. back to our presence you know yeah. and it the for me it's been um my goal lately is to try as hard as i can to really get back to the divine more and more often mm -hmm. during my day constantly touching back on that place not getting lost in the illusion all day long mm -hmm. because after a cycle of like say being conscious for 12 hours you, know, you wake up and you do your exercise and you meditate and you're feeling great and then yeah. you go to work <laughs> and then like work is hitting you man <laughs> yeah. you know and maybe you, you've i've lost my mantra for a little while or something like that it's like yeah. instead of hanging out with people during my 15 minute break or whatever or whatever time i have where it's like you're not you don't got to be on right now yeah. it's like i'll go find a corner or find somewhere peaceful yeah. and i'll sit again and i'll close my eyes again and i'll just be like i'm gonna get five ten minutes just do breathing go back, do a small meditation right in the middle of my day and then proceed back. And now my mantra is reset and it's Om Mate Pad Me Hum, Om Mate yeah. Pad Me Hum in my head. And I'm back, baby. Yeah. And the illusion starts <laughs> happening around you again. And uh, by the time you get home and you have dinner and watch a movie and everything, yeah. you're like almost lost again in it. And it's yeah. like, and it, that's where the, the whole concept of it being mm -hmm. a practice mm -hmm. where you just constantly have to dive back in and you want to, yes. you want to touch the divine within yourself yeah. as frequently mm -hmm. as you can, yes. man. you know, really, um, have those daily reminders and have this, this just almost automatic thing that you can get yourself moving forward in, uh, because, my friend I was talking about, he's, uh, he used to do the meditation and the mindfulness practices mm -hmm. and now he's like fucking drinking too much yeah. and smoking a lot. And, um, and he's just like, and I find myself really miserable, man. And yeah. I'm like, you got it. You know, once, once we start getting you back on this mindfulness practice mm -hmm. and, and getting you back this, in this direction. And, and he did too, you know, he yeah. went out and, and did these techniques in a little bit and he called me, the, you know, two days later and was just like, yeah. already starting to feel better man yeah. and he's like and you know what i'm quitting drinking haven't had anything to drink today yeah. 
And he like, he's like, he's like, I just, I just needed that spark to like wake myself back up yeah. to this reality of it all because yeah. man, can this thing trap you? It's such a great so trap. So quickly. Yeah. It's without, so convincing without even realizing it so quickly. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's, uh, it's a son of a bitch. It is, you, you know. know? <laughs> but <laughs> with the, with, you know, with the videos I was talking about, I, yeah. I, 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 returning back to the present, um, or my present before I lost my present. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't do a lot of outward videos and things like that. And what I wanted to mention is, I my reasoning for it is I've studied and I, I have all the terms. I know everything. I have everything down. My way of going about it has been to kind of have it for the masses and talk to people in a way because I have found myself that you, you can lose people sometimes uh, with yogic talk. Yeah. With trying to use too many of the yogic terms and things like that. So my uh, way of going about it has been trying to do it in a way of not using too much of uh, keeping the yogic terms to a, a, a minimum that I can, especially in my Sunday services I do for the temple. Uh, to kind of make it a little more accessible. Um, I think some people feel like if they don't uh, understand a certain term or, or something like that, they're like, okay, I just don't even want to pay attention to it. So I try to break it down and make it a little more uh, easier for people. And so for myself, for videos on my YouTube channel, I probably haven't found that particular way that I want to approach it yet. Um, where it's accessible, but still feels yogic for people who are in the yogic community. And when I'm saying yogic, yogic community, I don't mean, you know, the asanas. Of course, asanas are a small part of it, but um, that's what I mean. I'm still developing that way of reaching people where I am not you know, giving it in the terms of maybe my teachers or did or the guru of the disciples of my temple did. Uh, it's just doing it in a way to make it a lot more accessible. Uh, you know, I found in it the words and the, you know, the teachings that I needed to, and that was great for me. I want people to, I want the masses to really feel it as well. So I think that's probably more the way I try to do it. And I think the way I try to do it is more of my actions and just seeing the way that I am. And hopefully it uh, transponds to people. Well, that's really the best way you can communicate sure. these things, man. Mm -hmm. People see yeah. a change in you and they, yeah. they recognize how peaceful mm -hmm. you are. And yeah. um, I've, I've personally been confronted about that uh, a few times where mm -hmm. I have some... I, uh, a great example was I had this collective of people breathing down my neck. They were doing um, records off of my systems. I had a bunch mm -hmm. of systems lined up on an entire floor, and uh, they were going to be pulling it and doing streaming and recording yeah. off of it, and I was sending them healthy stuff, and, and they were just like not, they didn't have their shit together, mm -hmm. right? And at some point in their chain, it just wasn't happening. They are trying to blame me. Yeah. They, were, they were being kind of rude about it. And, and I was just literally saying things like, uh, you know, I'll give you everything you need from me, my friend, with love. We're going to take care of this. And, you know, I care about you. You know, I'm going to make sure you're okay, man. And I don't, not taking things personally. Mm -hmm. And slowly after I, you know, did over and over and over again, almost in a redundant fashion, I kept showing them that something's going on on your end although they didn't want to accept it and my, it, it, the story's getting boring my buddy's like i would have killed those fucking guys <laughs> he goes how did you put up with that for so long man you know like what's what was yeah. that i've never seen that before yeah. man and i go i genuinely love every single one of those people man and i was like just because they're lost doing their yeah. thing I, I really, I'm not even joking, man. I genuinely yeah. love every single one of those people, yeah. man. And I have compassion for what they're going through right now. And I just really wanted to help them. Yeah. And so, of course, I'm not taking it personally. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, I'm not getting upset about it because it's just like, what if that was, I mean, that's my brother right there in front of me talking yeah. to me like that, you know? And yeah. I treat him exactly the same way I would, man. Hey, I got your back, dog. You know, and I love you. <laughs> and I'm going to do everything I can for you. And, uh, and they were just like, why do you got to tell me how to get to this place? You know, yeah. like I, I'm just so 
lost in it. And I could never do something like that. And you can do something like that, my you friend. Can. You can. You can. You know? And then that's how that's how it really I you know starts with some people, mm -hmm. man. And just through leading by example. And yeah. I wasn't really planning on someone coming up and talking to me about that. In yeah. that circumstance, it was just yeah. how I try to carry myself. Yeah. And I'm not always perfect either. It's not like every circumstance I'm this, I, I'm nailing it. But at that point in, in, yeah. in time, I was very present. I was I was lost Beautiful, in mantra man. when it came to me. And mm. so I was like, I'm just going to just make sure that these guys know that there's nothing wrong and do it with a smile and with love. Yeah. And, and it just, it solved so many problems, man. I try to tell people that shit. Um, where they're just like, now you yell at people and you, 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 you know, you want to be firm and strong, yeah, strong and all this. Yeah. And I, and I just go, I've been doing that my whole life. And yeah. all that does is create additional conflict, mm -hmm. man. And I was like, unless someone's like trying to physically harm me, I solve yeah. all my problems with love. Yeah. And it, it's, it's diffuses so many things so mm -hmm. quickly. Yeah. And then all of a sudden we're on the same team really fast. And, yeah. you know, and it's like, I'm not worried about this job. Yeah. What's going on with you, bud? Yeah. Why are you so stressed out right now? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. talk to me about it. Fuck this place, man. Like, yeah. what's going on? Yeah. You know? And all of a sudden, there's no more conflict. And it's like, yeah. well, you know, just, you know, I've been uh, working this and my wife and, uh, uh, you know, and it's like, yeah. you know, I know, we know we know each other for a long time mm -hmm. or what, even if we don't. But yeah, that, that whole, that whole concept, man. Well, it's like, like, it's like being on the emotional emotionality bomb squad it's like you're uh, a person on the bomb squad trying to, to to diffuse the emotionality of others and you can with everything you just said yeah perfectly everything you just said yeah it's wonderful it blows my mind man mm -hmm. yeah it blows my mind yeah. I, I never thought it would work yeah. like that and it, yeah. it works every time it does you yeah. can um, you can diffuse that emotionality bomb every single time that way yeah you can yeah, there's just nothing to it. You just passion and love. You, you give people nowhere else to go. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna throw it back in your face. Yeah. You're getting no violent reaction from me. I'm yeah. not giving you any ammo or fuel for your rage. Yeah, it's just peace and love and compassion. And I mm -hmm. care about you. I care that you're feeling bad right now. Yeah, yeah. You stop tossing the ball yeah. back to them. You stop participating in the the action. They toss the ball. You let it hit you in the chest. Drop to the floor. That's it. There's nowhere else to go with the ball now. There's nowhere else to go with the emotionality. Yeah. Yeah. And we just take that around and it shows people you can be yeah. this kind of yeah. being in life, man. You can. So. And God, it feels so much better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Does it feel so much better? It's everything. Yeah. 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 It's like I, it's like there's, there's nothing else, man. Mm -hmm. You know, I talk to my mom about it. She's, she gets kind of weirded out if I start talking about philosophy and, yeah. and, and mindfulness practice. My, yeah. my dad is really into it yeah me and wow, him cool. we go on like this oh. all day i'll go over to his house and i'll be there for four or five hours <laughs> yeah. and we're just doing this kind con this exact conversation that <laughs> yeah. we're having and we'll get way wackadoo out there and yeah. hypotheticals and, yeah. and concepts of reality and but those are awesome it yeah. stretches the mind it's so beautiful yeah go ahead. yeah no, no no it's a yeah it's a podcast friggin uh and no she just goes <laughs> oh it's just this is just a uh this is just a phase you're going through You'll be over this soon enough, man. And I'm like, I don't think that's uh, how this works, man. And it's yeah. like I recognize that like literally everything else is completely meaningless besides all this. Yeah. Yeah, there's, it's all, um, it's one of the things that's always in my mind mm -hmm. from uh, the Bible, man. Yeah. Lay not your treasures where moth and dust corrupt. Yeah. All this material stuff exists in time, yeah. and therefore it's going to decay and yeah. go away, man. Yeah. Just like your body, yeah. just like your ego, mm -hmm. you know, there's all this, this whole studio. Yeah. It's not real. It yeah. exists in time. It's here. It's just here for right now. It's the present moment. Yeah. And I only get to have it for <laughs> right now, man. <laughs> yes. And, uh, and, you know, appreciate it for what it is. Yeah. It's the... Um, uh, the concept of the, the Buddhist with the crystal glass. He goes, mm. I know that this glass is broken. Yeah. It already broke yeah. at some point in time. The fact yeah. that I'm holding it right now unbroken is a gift. Yeah. And I appreciate it for what it is. And yeah. when it breaks, it will have always been broken. Yeah. And there's no remorse. Yeah. You know, there's, no, there's nothing there because I never had any attachment to it in the first place. Yeah. And that's really like... Uh, 
a beautiful metaphor. Mm. That's all you end up with in this process, it right? Is. You end up with a lot of like metaphors and stories and hyperbole mm -hmm. and all these things. You're always pointing at the moon, but I can't hand you that. I can just yeah. go, there's the moon's over there yeah. and it's attainable to everybody, but yeah. I can only point at it. I can't yeah. actually explain it. And my words aren't the moon. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and so it goes around in circles, man. Yeah. And it's fun. It I enjoy is. it. It's a blast. Yeah. It really is a blast. If we can see it like truly, truly, truly the way we can see it in divinity, it's a blast. Yeah. It's so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. I'm never like, I'm the most happy and the most present when I'm talking about it directly like this too. Yeah. It's, it's, Me I just too. feel so in touch with God and the divine mm -hmm. man. Anytime the conversation's going on, anytime I'm doing yeah. the practice. Yeah. It, it lights up my soul. There's no yeah. question about it. I mean, I had a really busy, hard day at work. I had to do my thing and I'm driving over here and I'm doing my, you know, practices I do to try to, you know, like, you know, slough off, you know, what I went through all day. And then I got here and started to, as soon as I pulled up, it was almost, uh, I was like, ah, yeah, I saw you and you looked at me and it was, it was just like that. It's like, my soul was like, ah, yeah, all right, here I am. <laughs> yeah. Peace is here. Presence is here. Yeah. So it was great. Yeah. You want to share that um, process? What is the process that you, you're doing as you're driving over here, like to remove the day from yourself? Is it mantra? Is it, it what? You know, honestly, for me, it's something different every time. I don't have one set thing that I do. Um, and probably a lot of people do this. It could be something as simple as I have a certain couple of songs. I'll like jam and I'll turn them up like really loud and I'll sing. You know, I'll do something like that. And a lot of people will do that. And if people would recognize that that is part of it too, it doesn't specifically have to be a mantra. You could just turn the radio up loud and just sing. And when you're singing, doing something like that, you are so in the present moment. Oh yeah. Who cares who's around? Who cares who's watching you? It doesn't matter. If you truly feel like that doesn't matter, then you are present. If you don't notice anybody else while you're singing, you're truly present. Or... So like one of the things I did when I was driving here, I focused on a spot on the mountain as I was driving to the west. Now, of course, keep in mind, I'm driving, so I have to like keep most of my attention to the front of the road. But in my peripherally, I kept something in mind. There was a spot on the mountain that I found beautiful. So I would have my periphery looking at that as I was driving. And when I found a time to like glance, I would glance to it, glance to it, glance to it. And just, I would do that. And when I stopped at the stoplight that was still facing that way to turn left during the stoplight, I just looked at it and I just looked at it and I just let that, that point, that singular point of beauty that I saw that I found beautiful, let it absorb into me. So it was just an object of beauty, if you will. Um, and there's an object of beauty meditation that, uh, I do every once in a while. That's a guided meditation and you're just finding an object, object of beauty. And that's really what it is. And you find that you let that absorb into your soul. You let that, you know, like seep into your third eye. You let it just go everywhere into your body and you let that radiate up and down your systemic channel, up and down the spine. And you let that radiate out. And, and that just really brings you like truly, truly divinely into the present moment. That's what I did on the way here. And again, like I said, you know, if you want to sing to, you know, some loud music, you know what, that can bring you there too, because you'll find that song, whatever you're doing that makes you feel good that you're singing, that is also an object of beauty. So there's a couple different directions to go with it. I gave you the one that I did, but there's also one that you can do as well. That's accessible for everybody. I love it, man. Yeah. That's the one I tell people that all the time. Mm -hmm. If you're not singing to the song in the car, mm -hmm. you're up here thinking yeah. about something going on. You sure are. And you're not present. And it's like, yeah. that's what you should, you can always be there yeah. singing to the song. I'm just lost in the moment, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, let's, uh, let's get you out of here. I've taken up a lot of your time today and I really appreciate you coming over here and, and spending yeah. time with me, man. I appreciate you. I think that's a great place to end it on. Okay. Yeah. How about I leave you off with a little prayer? How about I that? would love that so much. Right. Yeah. It's just a little something simple I say uh, at the end of everything I do. Namaste, G. 
May all beings everywhere be happy and free. May all life everywhere on the earth, in the solar system, in our galaxy, and indeed the universe, no peace, no peace, and no peace, and no love, divine love, and express it in the way that they know how to, in a way that is divine. All my blessings to everyone, all my blessings to all of life, everywhere in the universe. Namaste, G. Namaste, my friend. Namaste, brother. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for watching To The Fullest with Jason Froberg. You can check out more podcasts right here and subscribe by clicking right here.